Welcome to TSD Broadcasting. This is Chef Al Triller. Today we are being joined by Jean-Marc Zimmerman of the Zimmerman Law Group, who on Monday, August 13th, succeeded in obtaining a temporary restraining order in New York State Supreme Court against the Manhattan Club Timeshare Association, Inc., and on behalf of Robert Tucker, a Board of Directors nominee, staying all action taken by TMC's Board of Directors at and after its annual meeting held on August 9th, 2018, and recorded requiring TMC to show cause on August 29th why it should not have to produce the owner's list sought by Mr. Tucker and as required by New York statute, which was previously requested by him and to which access was denied. Hi, J.M. Uh, welcome to the broadcast. Good morning, Chef. How are you? Very good. Thank you. There was this meeting on uh, August 9th of uh, the owners of the Manhattan Club. I spoke to several uh, owners afterwards, and uh, it seemed like there was general disappointment. What was your takeaway as a result of that meeting? Well, uh, you're right. I got proxies from a couple of owners, and I did attend the meeting. And uh, my take is that the meeting was worthless. They refused to answer any substantive questions. A lot of owners had real specific questions about long-standing complaints about excessive maintenance fees, about the inability to sell their units, about the inability to give the deed back and walk away, about the fact that they are unable to get time rooms at the timeshare, yet they can go online and rent, rent them on aggregator sites like Expedia or Travelocity. The bottom line is the people who were there on behalf of the Manhattan Club and on behalf of Blue Green provided no substantive answers as to how these complaints were going to be remedied. You're in the process of planning a lawsuit. You're representing several owners who are, uh, I guess, really disgusted with the situation. But uh, one of the key issues that uh, we, we have discussed in the past is access to the owners list. Across the country, there is always difficulty with owners who have legitimate reasons to have access to the owner's list, but they're systematically denied. And uh, tell us about exactly what transpired with your interest in uh, gaining access to the owner's list on behalf of your clients. Well, we got one of the owners who agreed to be a uh, plaintiff, and it's not so much that, uh, you know, pl plaintiff that the owners have legitimate reasons for getting the owner list. Under New York State law, if you are a member of a not-for-profit, you are entitled under the law to the owner's list, as long as you made written requests within, you know, five days before. And that's what we did here. We failed to provide the list. We went to court, and we got a temporary restraining order staying all action taken at the board meeting on August 9th and thereafter and requiring TMC to appear in court on the 29th of this month as to why they should show cause why they should not be forced to produce the owner's list. And uh, could you just give us a quick summary of what was contained within your complaint? We, we, we set forth the facts, as I just recited, that demand was made in accordance with the law, that the T at TMC refused to disclose the list. We cite the relevant sections of the New York State not-for-profit corporate law that pertains to providing ownership lists to members, membership lists to members. It's that simple. It's not, it's not complicated. It's very straightforward. And you're trying to negate the uh, the results of the of the meeting. Well, that was great. That, that was granted. Yeah, that's what the restraining order is. So everything that was done at the board meeting is of no effect, and no no action can be taken by the board until we have this hearing on August 29th. But right now. Everything is in limbo, if you want. They've got to show up on the 29th and, and explain what transpired, why they didn't provide the list, and uh, we'll see what happens there. Uh, that's going to be uh, in a public forum. If any of our listeners have an interest in going down to the courthouse, even though it might be postponed, that they may be local, uh, uh, they would be able to sit in court and hear what's going on? 60 Center Street, courtroom 345. I don't get to the exact time. I I'm not aware, and maybe you are aware, of um, any formal requests that were made by owners for the owner's list under the law. Are you aware of any others that made requests that were denied, or was it um, you're just familiar with what transpired with your clients? Uh, we had other owners also make requests that uh, were ignored. You know, they, they give an, 
their response is that they don't want to give out the members list because they're concerned with the members' privacy. But that's that's just a charade. They just don't want the members to communicate with one another and be able to organize to get redress for their problems. None of the members who are requesting the members list are looking to do anything improper with the list. And especially in Mr. Tucker's case, Mr. Tucker was a candidate for election to the board and sought to get the list to promote his candidacy, and TMC refused to give him the list. Right, and that's uh, Robert Tucker. So he had uh, really valid reasons to have uh, access to the owner's list, and and that's been the typical playbook that's taken place uh, across the country. It's, it's uh, not unusual. Now, there's always a problem when all the... Uh, all the deeds or whatever are recorded under the address of the Manhattan Club address in New York. So uh, is that going to pose a problem for you, getting actual addresses and contact information for the owners? It's, it's a problem. We've asked, we want the membership list, and we want it in electronic form. So there's over 10,000 members. EMC has no problem communicating with its members by email. That's what we want. We want it in electronic form. The deeds really have nothing to do with this because they don't send the deeds to owners, you know, the TMC address. They send bills and other information regarding TMC maintenance fee payment bills to the owner's non-TMC address. This could be a big game changer for uh, the direction of the future of the Manhattan Club. Uh, do you agree with that? And if so, why? Well, because this will give owners an opportunity to communicate with one another about the complaints that have been longstanding and have not been addressed by the assurance of discontinuance that was entered into with the New York State Attorney General. Moreover, the, the explanations, the answers, I should say the lack of explanations and the refusal to answer substantive questions at the board meetings is further demonstrate the fact that things are going to continue along the same vein, or in the same vein, I should say. And Blue Green is not a friend to Manhattan Club owners. They just want to sell more units. So it was made clear there's going to be no, no assistance is going to be given with regard to selling units held by current owners. No assistance is going to be given with regard to taking or accepting deeds so that owners can walk away and not have to pay maintenance fees and real estate taxes. Now, how concerned are you that uh, there's really no um, uh, effective owner representation on the current board of directors? How, how big a deal is that? Well, I, I think the concern, the, 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 pre, the uh, same non-sponsor directors were re-elected. And, uh, you know, the sponsor directors now are people from Blue Green. And as far as I can tell, based on what I've been told from owners, no announcement was made beforehand that these blue-green employees and blue-green officers had taken up positions on the board. Again, it's uh, another example of, of this lack of transparency in the operations of the Manhattan Club. And if any of our listeners want to get in touch with you to find out more about uh, what your plans are for this, uh, this litigation, how do they go about doing that? Send me an email at jmz at tmcsuit.com. Thanks, JM, for joining us today and for giving us this update on your efforts on behalf of your clients. Thanks for having me, and uh, we look forward to speaking to you again in the future. And this concludes this program on TSD Broadcasting. You know, at Timesharing Today, your opinion really does count. Be sure to stay in touch with us on Facebook and by email at staff at tstoday.com.